So yeah, remember Final Fantasy XIII's terrible text dump loading screens? They're back. Possibly. Yeah. Is it, well, at least, to be fair, this time, there are... They actually have a unique one for each little side quest and everything like that, so you it does constantly change. I was gonna say, possibly new and improved. You know, for certain values of improved. Do you know what's the opposite of improved? You know, open question. Any answer acceptable. I want to talk to you. I think that you have it backwards. Oh, this is an improvement, though. Yeah, Lightning is having absolutely none of Chocolina's shit. Although that's not really very notable, because Lightning isn't really having much of anybody's shit. So yeah, do you like fetch quests? Or Chocolina? Oh, what's that? You don't like either of those things? Well, um, I've got some bad news for you then. Yeah, so the Board of Prayers is... It essentially has the other half of the side quests in this game. It's all the boring bullshit fetch quests and... Like, the ones that don't really have anything attached to it other than, Hey, go here, get a thing. Okay, thanks, bye. Yeah, they're basically just there to give you some tiny amounts of stats. And a lot of... Actually, I will say these these do like kind of give you a nice little deluge of cosmetic items. So that's nice. Fortunately, there is no limit on them, so there is no reason to not just take all of them all the time and then just check in every once in a while. Really, this whole thing should have been entirely automated. Like, seriously. Oh well, let's wander. So, uh, Luxurian is kind of a big place. It's not the biggest in the game, but it's it's pretty sizable. It's a respectable size for a single focal location in a JRPG scale endeavor. So, we are going here, over to the Market District. Because this is where we will be buying all of our actual equipment. Buying things is important. Especially equipment. Move carefully through this area. Thank you, Hope. Right. You can escape from battle when you're truly desperate, but it comes with a price. All miracles do. A price? What kind of price? Your time and that of this world. The more you run, the less souls you'll save. In short, I can't help but take this as some sort of very subtle commentary on the whole notion that the video game is wasting your time. Like if you're gonna if you're just gonna run from battles, then well, we're not gonna actually waste you, the player's time, but we're gonna waste lightning's time. I really don't know how I feel about it as a mechanic. Yep, camera, camera, come on. Anyway, I, I hope you, I hope you like destructible stuff on the map. I mean, it's a very, very, like very, very rudimentary like implementation. There's also there's also a bunch of just kind of random quest items scattered around. Oh God, yeah, it, this game is very weird about that kind of stuff. So, like, yeah, like we got a quill pen there. That quill pen will not be relevant for about three or four in-game days, but, you know, we have it. That's a thing. Totally does. So yeah, swords and shields. Not much explanation necessary, really. Yeah, this is where you're going to get 90% of your stat boosts from. You, I mean, you, you obviously get them from uh, side quests, but this is where the big chunks come from. Yeah, equipment is very, very important. Modifying equipment. So this is a thing that you can. Hang on, did we just magically gain five hundred and twelve thousand four hundred and seventy gil and about eighteen thousand HP? Yes. Hmm. So welcome to New Game Plus. This is a feature that you can only do on New Game Plus for God knows what reason, 
but you can, in fact, upgrade your equipment. Seriously, I don't know what they were thinking. Only on New Game Plus. Only. An entire game mechanic with depth and sub-mechanics and little incentives and, like, unique dedicated item drops and min-maxing potential and strategic depth forever locked until you finish an entire playthrough of the game, which is not a very short amount of time. Yeah, the first time I did it, it was about 40-odd hours. So, yeah. I don't get it. Welcome. Are you looking for rare items from the Wildlands? I've got a mighty fine selection. Um. Yeah, sure, why not? This is not what I would call a selection. I see you're a woman who knows exactly what she um, wants. It's a mighty fine product. We wanted the ex the this singular product that you sell. I'd never be able to sell this baby. Thank goodness you came along to change that. It's a little rich for most folks. Is everyone enjoying the local music, by the way? Yeah, there's a couple musicians kind of scattered around, and they just kind of overtake the soundtrack when they're in range. It's a nifty little thing. Yeah, I mean, they're of highly, highly variable quality, but I really like the fact that they exist. Okay, so real talk, this guy tells you that he can be of some assistance if you want to freely move around in the Warren. I have never once in my playthrough figured out how you do that. Um, yeah. No. Utter, utter bullshit. Like, I, I'm reasonably sure that that's, like, that's something that was cut from the game and they just forgot to delete that little reference to it. That, or he's just very very loosely tied to some other thing that we totally take for granted and is very poorly explained and... Duh. Anyway, so real quick, we're gonna equip this, uh, this th couple things we got. That Spark Strike, among other things, but that Runic Ring we got is special because ring-type accessories, you get, their you get their benefits no matter which schemata you're in. So in other words, we will now always have 10% magic resistance. By the way, this won't be very apparent in the LP, but I really hope you like that menu, because you're going to be staring at it a lot if you play this game. Anyway, great. Like it. Oh, sorry, good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the primary mindshare and time sink. You just sit there contemplating your options, watching your numbers hypothetically go up and down. It takes over your mind, you're trying to do like a fucking depth first tree search in your mind to find the perfect, optimal, perfect strategy. You bring with you She's like God's totally not speaking from experience, by the way. So, uh, the gremlin is not particularly dangerous. Um, as you saw, if we just punch him while he's trying to cast magic, you will stagger him and then do a shit ton of damage. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of encounters in this game aren't particularly dangerous in and of themselves. I mean, there's, there's a... There are some depths to it. And what? How do you know my name? I don't think we've met. What? Don't tell me you don't remember Chocolina! Hang on. Of course you wouldn't. Let's just say that I gave your sister a helping hand during her journey a long, long time ago. Have I missed something? You helped Sarah on her journey? No, no, Chocolina is just, you're not entirely you know, kind of be like, hey, no, I'm your friend, you remember me. This seems like something that we should have, we should have like had the first time we talked to her. How do I know you're not lying to me? Well, you're just going to have to try. Ooh, I know, I can tell you all about my past until I convince you I'm a friend. It all started back when... Knowing what I now know about her past, I really... Want this to not happen. Thank you, Lightning. Thank you, Lightning. Saying exactly what we were thinking. Wow, what a fetch quest. Yup. And we didn't even get any really anything out of it. A point of strength. Hooray. Really, really, you're in you're in these for the cosmetic items. Because, yeah, as, as mentioned, we do need about 50-odd of them later on, so... Need? Want. Well, want and need. 
really, what what player doesn't immediately start equipping and collecting these? Where do you think a group of people are likely to gather unnoticed? The station plaza, perhaps? Anyway, hey, do you like stealth games? Do you like Assassin's Creed? You know what my favourite mission type in Assassin's Creed is? It's the really well-designed and thrilling and fun tailing missions. So, fun fact, um, you do not actually have to do this. If you were so inclined, I could run down there and kill them right now, and it would achieve generally the same effect. I didn't know that. I wish I did know that. But we're going to show how this is intended to be done. Uh, taking the game seriously. Well, me neither, but why do we bring it up now? He's gonna say, yes, thank you, Hope, we know. We, we had this discussion already. It has to be. But who's the shadow One of the things I, I like about the environments in this game is that there's, these, there's all these poles lying around that you can slide down, and they're basically pointless. Except, Lightning does a little pirouette as she slides down, and it looks cool, I guess. Does that mean he's also behind the Says something about this game's priorities. Anyway, are you all thrilled? I'm thrilled. The music is very fitting. Hey, that was some exciting crouching action, Fiddle. I don't think you appreciate this properly. I don't think I do. That guy just clipped through us. Ah, oh, whatever. By the way, I hope, I hope you guys are remembering the locations of all these clocks. Just saying. Ugh. Yeah, now that I know that you can just kill these people, I don't think I would ever do this side quest seriously ever again. I think it, I think being able to kill them is purely intended as a hey, you really fucked up the stealth. Thing. Show that you are one of us. In the forest of darkness, chaos holds sway. To the goddess of death, these numbers I say: seven, eight, nine, one. The rites are beginning. This is the dumbest fucking thing ever. just found my invitation to the party. Yeah, so when the phone rings, you have to give them a four-digit code. Simple, if you have the numbers. Right, simple. So any bright ideas about how to do that? I mean, considering like, you're doling out advice... you know, you know, they, they you literally just... No, I don't get, I don't get why you have to do this this way either. I think the numbers might be different for the next day. But like we're we're right here. We could have just tailgated the them. Cult, the so children of are behind the look, look, you're asking a lot of this, okay? Uh I mean, you know, the 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 external reason we have to do this is because getting the numbers is going to require us to go across day boundaries and they need an excuse to make us do something across multiple days to drive home the point that that's possible. That's why they do this. It's not that clear cut. So yeah, that's our grand plan for uh, day two. We have to go hunt down the numbers so we can crash their party in the graveyard. Good time. And naturally doing so will require us to scour the entire city, including probably the Warren, which means we won't even be able to finish until midnight. It's gonna be great! Almost entirely according to plan, really. I mean, this this whole thing is basically an excuse to force you to learn a bunch of, shall we say, home truths about the clock. I mean, I can, I can see what they're going for. But, yeah... Anyway, Hope really, really wants us to leave, but we're going to spend the rest of the night here in Luxurian, just kind of taking a lap of the place. Seeing the sights. Yeah, so we'll see you guys next time for that. Bye.